If you're really into vintage buses and RVs and vehicles like that, click the like and subscribe button uh, and then check out this video here about our solar setup. The ultimate solar powered bus. When we first started this, you know, people told us we wouldn't be able to do it solar power. You can't run air conditioners on solar power, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. We knew that we could, especially if we had the right batteries. Uh, we got the, the Battleborn batteries now, um, much superior than anything that we had before. We've had solar on the roof for years of the bus. Um, not, a, not a ton, but we weren't able to do a whole lot with the batteries. We couldn't really see all the possibilities. We literally live in this thing full time, not plugged in, never run a generator. And as far as we're concerned, we're plugged into a 50 amp electric outlet wherever we're at. That's what it acts like. We have the power to do whatever we want run our air conditioner, cook with the convection oven, all these, all the things that she uses in the, in the, at home, she can use in the bus and it's all off of the batteries and the sun. We even charge our electric golf cart with the bus, which has six of its own lead acid batteries inside of it. Um, and then we have the ground deployed panels as well. We have the four of those that are just kind of some extra ones. Um, we have been tipping them up in the sun, uh, at, towards the east and then towards the west at night just to get a little bit more power we get about another 20 amps um, uh, just to give you an idea uh, overall power production we run about 25 kilowatt hours per day that we're getting from the sun right now in the summertime here um, and it's capable of doing more but the batteries once our batteries hit 100 percent you know the chargers kind of shut down into a standby mode and they don't produce any more power so uh, we have more power than what we need, uh, and we really designed the system so that cloudy days, we can also still run the air conditioner all day long and not worry about and still hit hit 100%. Uh, so the, the Battleborn batteries, which we are now adding two more, we're going to have 10 in the system, which we'll show you those, the eight that we have in there now. Uh, those are going to be here in a couple days. Uh, just to have a little extra storage capacity because the solar is able to produce more. We wanted to just be able to harness that and have it more usable during the nighttime. Uh, we've had some really warm nights in the 80s until like 3 o'clock in the morning. The air conditioner, we want to run it a lot more and we don't want to deplete our battery. You still want to be able to get up in the morning and have plenty of battery power before the sun comes up or if it is even cloudy uh, to be able to, you know, cook breakfast and everything. So all of our electric, all of our cooking devices are electric. Everything is electric in the bus. We don't use propane for anything um, other than I have an engine boost that it uses uh, going up hills and stuff. Uh, but yeah, the refrigerator is electric, the water heater is electric, uh, everything on the bus is electric, and the sun is what enables us to do that. And super high powered, uh, the solar panels are amazing. Everything that you would want to do on a different, uh, at an RV park, we can do out in the middle of nowhere as far as our electric needs and not have to worry about running a generator and listening to a generator or carbon monoxide or anything at all like that. This is Lenny, our 1947 Greyhound bus. I'm going to give you a quick tour of him and show you our solar install that we have done. Uh, massive amount of solar. allows us to boondock out here without electricity. We've been out here for uh, over three months now, and uh, the solar is amazing. We run the air conditioning 24 hours a day. Uh, with the battery bank that we have on the solar, we're back up to 100%. Uh, every day in the last two months, except for one day, we didn't get to 100%. And that day was a rainy, super rainy day, and we got to 96%. But uh, I, I'm going to show you what we've got here. This is the rear. It is from the front. 3,270 watts up on the rooftop, 54 volts. Allows us to charge. 140 amps in full sun to our batteries that are 24 volt. We also have four additional panels that we can ground deploy and I'm installing some transportation racks underneath the bus where they can slide when we go from place to place under there to carry them so we don't need these on sunny days or even partly cloudy days but for real heavy rainy days uh, it definitely comes in handy having this extra power they're 327 watts per panel 
battery test so we've got 24 or uh, 400 amp hours of 24 volt lithium ion batteries from Battleborn those are actually that's 8 12 volt 100 amp hour batteries so here are our Victron charge controllers we have them hooked up I have about 2,000 watts 1,962 watts go to this one and a little over 2,000 go to that one um, but they're wired in for 24 volts and they so they do charge I get about 2,000 watts out of each one of them in full Sun they have very large uh, connectors on them so as you can see I actually have three wires 10 gauge wires and each of the solar photo uh, photovoltaic uh, inlets on this one and then we have the number two gauge wire two watt coming out of both of them so plenty of room to hook stuff to. It's a very secure connection. Um, I have two of everything Victron in the setup. I just wanted to have redundancy built up and everything. So we have two uh, inverters, multi-plus inverters, 3000 watts each, 24 volt. Um, we used to have a different brand of solar charge controller. Uh, it was a name brand one. Uh, not Victron and it went out and it overcharged our batteries and ruined our battery bank So I had to invest in all new batteries and at that point we went with Victron. I started with one and then added another one and Completely changed our solar setup. I love the way the Victron operates. It just runs everything so efficiently uh, it, I don't have to worry about them. They charge the batteries perfectly Everything is programmed through the app. The app allows us to monitor everything real-time I, I love the Victron charge controllers. Actually, all of the Victron products that we have, I absolutely love them. Here's the app for the two solar charge controllers. The one on the left, again, is 1,962 watts of solar, but we're actually pulling in 2,061 watts. We're pulling in over the rating of the panels. That's how good they are. Uh, so it's taking them at 58 volts, and then it's stepping it down to 24 volts, and that, but boosting the amperage. Uh, which is what they what's what the MPPT does. And then the one on the right is the one that I have hooked up in series parallel. So it's doubling the voltage so that it's reducing the amperage and then it's kicking the amperage back up when it drops it down to 24 volts. But you can see here that I'm getting less uh, conversion out of it. So that's why I do like the series better than the series parallel. Here's a quick view of the solar that we have on the bus. We have 3,200 watts on top of the bus itself mounted to it. And then we have another uh, four panels that we can ground deploy separately. These are our two Victron uh, MultiPlus inverters. This runs everything. There's two of them. They're 3,000 watts each, 24 volts. It runs our microwave, our air conditioning, electric water heater, convection oven, all that high demand stuff, no problem. And then we also have the Orion uh, step down converter so that takes our 24 volt down to 12 volt that runs all of our 12 volt systems on the bus as well It's 10 o'clock in the morning and we're already pulling in over a hundred amps on the bus at 24 volts with the solar panels right now um, It's gonna be a warm day Just some statistics here. We've been living in the bus for almost six months now uh, with no plug-ins whatsoever no generator just solar power the heat of the summer has really been on the last uh, week here. Um, it's been into the 80s after midnight some nights. We've had the air conditioning on 24 hours a day. Um, it's just amazing when it's that hot. It's cool now here this morning. It's only, uh, I think it's 80 right now, but it was down in the in the upper 60s last night. So we actually have the, the windows open in there and Kelly's doing some cooking this morning. Um, but we've been running that air conditioner all night long and it really doesn't cycle on and off because it's been so warm and Our batteries, you know, we wouldn't be able to do this without the, the Battleborn batteries for storage They really take that power that we produce all day long and make it usable for us overnight at high amp draws uh, So with that air conditioner running just off of battery power um, That's really nice to be able to do that uh, Lead acid batteries. We would not be able to do that uh, this is just such a, a, a much better system, and thank goodness for those Battleborn batteries. This Mr. Cool mini split air conditioner is what allows us to run the air conditioner so much. We got rid of our two rooftop airs. Uh, they were Dometics uh, Penguin 2s. They pulled about twice as much power as what this did, but this actually cools better and at about half of the power, not quite half, but almost half. Um, 
So we can really run it all night long. Now we had been running our Dometic rooftop air unit that was in the back bedroom all night long before uh, off of the, the batteries. But because it was a small bedroom, you keep the bedroom door closed, the thermostat would turn it on and off. So it would only run about maybe 20% of the time that it was actually plugged in. And that would allow it uh, to be able to do that all night long off the batteries. But now the Mr. Cool, we can keep the whole entire bus cooled all night long uh, with that because it uses so much less power. So let's talk about some of the equipment here real quick. Uh, these solar panels that we got, these are commercial grade panels, but they're used, but they're all still within specs and have like 20 years left in their warranty. These particular ones are sun power panels. They're 327 watts each. Uh, we got these at a place called Santan Solar, S-A-N-T-A-N -A -A Solar. They're out of Gilbert, Arizona. We paid $110 a piece for each of these panels. I think they're normally like $400, $500 per panel. So you can get used panels that are all still within spec. They still have a warranty. Um, they're great. So I love Santan Solar. You know, they didn't give me anything for say in that. I uh, didn't get any discount. Um, our friend Juan and Michelle with uh, Beginning From This Morning on YouTube, they're the ones who turned us on to that place. Um, and we recommend them highly because with the products that they have and the prices are unbelievable. Uh, number two is Victron. We love all of our Victron stuff. And you can buy Victron stuff on Amazon if you want to, but I highly recommend that you buy them from uh, Battleborn, which is where we got ours. Battleborn Batteries is a Victron dealer and they offer support. So if you have a problem or a question about how to hook something up or how to, you can call them and talk to them. If you just buy something on Amazon, you're probably not gonna have that kind of support back behind it. So prices are gonna be about the same. I think when I was looking with what Battleborn, I think like Victron must control their prices or something. What I see on Amazon and what everybody else sells it for within a dollar or two a piece is what I really saw. So I would, you know, much rather buy it from a, a US company like Battleborn, um, you know, helping them and the fact that they have the support there for you. And then obviously the batteries, I don't think there's anything better. You know, you could try to make your own batteries. Um, I am not comfortable enough with my skills at making batteries and as high powered and dangerous as they are, I don't want those underneath of me at night. If something shorted out, the BMS in the Battleborn batteries is phenomenal. Um, it's a super smart battery. It, it, it's got a warranty, a 10 year warranty with it. I, the Battleborn batteries are, are a game changer. Um, which I suppose any lithium ion uh, or lithium iron type battery is going to be that. Um, but the Battleborn is just far superior. The, the quality that goes into what, what's made with that, uh, it is just the best battery that I've seen. And I've not heard anything better about any other batteries. And their customer support and everything is just top notch over there. And they're out of Sparks, Nevada. I highly recommend them as well. All right, so let's talk cost. What, what does it cost to turn your, your RV into basically a space station looking thing? <laughs> um, number one, if you're going out and looking at a really good RV generator, you're looking at a diesel generator and you know, like a 10 kilowatt RV diesel generator is probably gonna set you about 12 to $13,000 back. And then on top of that, you're still gonna want a house battery system. So you're gonna have all of you know, that kind of investment in some house batteries, uh, you know, maybe six to 10 golf cart batteries, and then you're going to need a big inverter um, and that kind of stuff too. So by the time you did all of that, it's really about the same price as what we have in this. So we don't have a generator at all on the bus, zero, zero electric producing capability from that other than the sun. Um, I probably will get a very small Honda generator in the future just to carry as a backup emergency. Um, but with the batteries and the storage that we have, I don't need anything more than that. Um, so, you know, you're looking, the batteries are by far the biggest expense. You know, I did double of everything cause I wanted redundancy. Uh, I can't tell you how many times I get to somebody to work on their bus or their RV and you know, their generator doesn't work right. Or they're having generator problems or, you know, you ran out of fuel in the generator. You got to go back and forth to get fuel. There's, it's so much more convenient. All we have to do is just try to park in the sun and that's pretty easy to do. It seemed like most campgrounds I went to anyways, before or places I would camp, I always ended up being in the sun. And now I have a permanent shade on top of the bus. So the roof of the bus is pretty much so, you know, 90% obscured now by shade. So it's kind of like we have a double roof, which helps the insulating in the summer heat as well. Uh, so overall cost, I think I've got about $16,000 ish in the entire system. If you tried to reproduce it, um, it could maybe be up to about 20, depending on, uh, you know, what, what components you find at what prices and so on. But again, on an RV, by the time you did the regular power setup, uh, with a, a nice RV generator, 
Um, a, a gas generator, the little Honda ones, that doesn't typically count. That's not real reliable for your full-time use. It's okay to have as a standby or an uh, auxiliary thing. But when you're wanting to run air, multiple air conditioners and things like that, you really need more power uh, than what a small generator. So yeah, you can get cheap and you can get a contractor grade type generator. Then you got carbon monoxide, you got loud noises. This thing is completely silent with everything that it does. Um, even that mini split air conditioner is so quiet. Uh, but anyways, that just gives you an idea about cost-wise what you're looking at. Uh, it's about the same investment as an RV generator and a regular house setup by the time you're done with it. Um, it could obviously be more or less depending on how far you go with it. We just wanted the ability to do anything and everything and we have that now. Check the air and all those duels It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Well, he's got a long, hard ride In old Lenny the Silver Sides Get that bus grease monkey on the road Well, he's got that hammer down And that 47 hound It's that bus grease monkey on the road He travels all around And he's coming to your town Get that bus grease monkey down the road Propped up engine door Watch that bus grease monkey do his thing Thirty years behind that barn Cause it don't run worth a darn Watch that bus grease monkey make it sing He knows in Detroit there's no doubt Upside down and inside out It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? Saving buses far and wide In that old blue silver sides It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? He's moved his family to the hills of Tennessee Watch that bus grease monkey make his home Bringing buses back to life with the help of his dear wife Watch that bus grease monkey get it done Well he travels town to town looking on them old greyhounds It's that bus grease monkey don't you know Buses far and wide in old Lenny the Silver Sides. It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know? It's that bus grease monkey, don't you know?